<clears throat> okay, let's get started. So we're going to talk about uh, PDEs. Uh, I think about three or four classes left. So first we'll talk about parabolic PDEs and how to solve them. Okay, so in particular, we look at the 1D heat conduction equation. Uh, the equation for heat conduction is given by this D square, sorry, this is a partial square. equals tau dt. Okay, so what does this represent? Uh, if you have like a, a rod, let's say, uh, this is x, Okay, you hold the ends of the rod at different temperatures. Uh, so, say this point. The temperature end at end A, say D, uh, temperature at end A is uh, uh, T A, temperature at end B is T B. And then you want to figure out what is the evolution of temperature as time goes by. So uh, an equation like this has the second derivative in time on the left side and first derivative on the right side. You need to specify three initial, well, three conditions. Uh, they would be as follows. You need one in the, uh, initial condition. Initial condition is typically associated with the initial time. So what happens at time t equals zero? So here we are interested in the temperature profile. I should have put here t is temperature here. So you need to know something about the temperature at time t equals zero. And this is characterized by two things. One is x, x is in this case the dis distance from uh, one of the ends and t small t is, or lowercase t is the time. So I'll write the solutions to this are typically uh, characterized by t x comma t. And so when we specify the initial condition, we specify it at time t equals zero. So this would be some f of x. Okay, so at time t equals zero, that's the thing. And then because there's a second derivative in x right here, uh, you need to specify two boundary conditions. Uh, they are at any time t, the end a, which is this one, the temperature is ta, and at time, any time t on the end b, the temperature is tb. Okay, so ic is initial. condition and BC is boundary condition. A bound is usually a spatial part of it, something to do with X space, uh, X, Y, Z, and initial condition is usually associated with time. So what's our goal? Our goal is uh, to compute the temperature as a function of X, the distance, from the left and the time. Okay, now uh, something like this, when you want to do it numerically, it would be nice to have analytical formula, but most time you cannot have analytical formula. So you need to solve this numerically. So what we'll do is we'll use two indices, i and j, where i would be x spatial component and j would be the time, the temporal component, space and time. Okay, and then when we get the solution, we'll actually get it at a grid point. We talked about grid points when we did curve fitting uh, or even ODEs, and we had grids at different times. In this case, because there's X and T, we'll have grid points at 
specific times as a specific spatial position. So it will be I and J. So if you want the true solution, you will have to uh, divide this into infinitely many um, grid points and that will give you the true solution, assuming that your solution, finite different solutions, right? So what we'll do next is we'll find a numerical way of solving for this equation. So one way of doing that is to discretize that equation. So this is going way back to the first thing we did in this course, which is if you're given a differential equation, uh, can you approximate it using a finite difference? So let's take one, uh, where one is the equation. So paste it here. And then I'm going to discretize it. Yeah, and this is where you will use some of the things you learned in that in that particular section. So finite difference. Okay, so there are many schemes to do it, and depending on the scheme, you'll give uh, your problem could your uh, formulation could lead to a very complex solution or an easy solution. Some of them would be accurate, less accurate so on and so forth. So what we'll do is we'll just use the simplest possible thing, which is uh, use it in the central difference for the first one, the left side. So now here's the thing to remember, there are like two indices, i and j. You need to be very careful about which index you use to discretize this. Remember that in t, i, j, we call this as the x component, and then we call this one as the time component. So keep that in mind. So when we do this expansion for the second derivative, it's going to be an expansion, the forward difference about the first index, the i index. So the easy way to do this is to just write this pretending it is one dimensional. So t uh, okay. i plus one minus I okay. Now that we wrote pretending it is one dimensional, now we can actually put the other index. So let's write J J J. Okay, it turns out that I've Actually done it. Let, let me. Um, I did a mistake. So let's let's do this. And I think just just to be consistent with the book, some of you know are referring the book. The book actually uses a different convention. It just uses. Uh, let's switch this up. So it uses this as time, and this one as. Sorry, this one as position. My bad. This one is position. And this one as time. Yeah, I should have I should have done it this way. It really doesn't matter, but let's just stick with the book convention R T and X. So that'll change a few things here. This will be uh, X. This will be time. Okay, this will have repercussions here. Okay, so we have the opportunity to try this out again. So now, again, this is space. Space is X. So that's the second index. So just write it as J plus one j j minus one pretending it's one dimensional and now to get the time one it's just going to be the same okay that's the left side now for the right side let's use forward difference okay so again we do the same thing here the differential is about time so we have i plus one minus t i divided by delta t. And then let's put the same for the j, it will just be j, j. Let's, let's try to understand this. Uh, some people like to think of this visually. Let's do this, understand this whole thing visually. Uh, since you're talking about, you remember ODEs, we talked about time. So there was only one axis. Here we're talking about uh, 
two axes, i and j. i, let's say, is uh, i is time. I'm just going to write two adjoining grid points, i, i plus one. And then let's try two adjoin, three adjoining points for j because you can see there's three of them on the left side. So j minus one, j, j plus one. So what is a grid point? It's basically uh, this combination. So here we have four grid points. Okay, and we can we can um, name them. This is going to be t i comma j minus one. T i comma j, t i comma j plus one, i plus one j minus one j, and then t i plus one j plus one. Okay, now that we have those grid points. Uh, let's try to place these things. So this is Tij. That's Tij. It also appears here. Then we have Tij plus one. Then we have uh, Tij minus one. And then we have one more thing here. T i plus one j i plus one j. Okay. So roughly, what it's doing is it's basically using those those four points in order to uh, that formula has those four points. Now, when we're solving this, we're solving this. Think of this uh, as follows. At time t equals zero, we know what the solution is completely because all f of x is given to you. Uh, you sort of know the whole ground truth. And once we know things at time t equals zero, we have to propagate that ahead. So at time t equals a delta t, two delta t, and so on. So in this case, uh, we typically will know what happens at the lower time index. The lower time index is the lower t. So we will we typically know when i equals zero, we have t zero comma j or j plus one or whatever you would like to have is basically a function of x. We we kind of just put a star here. We just kind of know this. So these solutions are usually known. And what we don't know is what happens after this. So what we'll do is essentially use the values at this point, this point, this point to compute value at that point. And then once you do that, let me just make some space. Once you do that, you will get this solution. And then you can compute this solution too because you'll use this point, this point, Okay, let me, okay, wait. Okay, I'll explain it slightly differently. This is gonna be confusing on the same figure. So this is just showing six grid points, but actually in reality, there are many more grid points. So let's say that you have lots of grid points. And so on. Right, so what you're doing here is you basically have identified this pattern comes in this formula. So what you're going to do here is these will be known. As I said, the first time t equals zero is known. So you'll use this, this, this value to compute this value. Next, you'll use these four, which is this, 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 to compute this value. And then you'll use these four to compute this value. So eventually you'll, you'll get 
what happens at time? So this is time i equals zero. I equals zero. And i equals one will come because you're going to apply that formula again using those four points. And then you'll get i equals two. So it just keeps propagating from below to up. And that's how I'll do it. So what we need to do here is we need to solve for, this is our unknown. We need to solve for that. So let's take this equation and solve for t i plus one comma j. Okay, so once you solve for that, just moving things around, you get alpha delta t divided by delta x square i plus i comma g plus one minus plus t i g minus one divided by oh no, thanks, sorry. Just that and then one minus two times alpha delta t square. This is, this is actually a slightly better return if you write this is f plus one j minus t i plus one minus two f, okay, where F is alpha delta t delta x square. Okay, so this is going to be our formula. We use uh, the truncation error. That I'll give without proof, but uh, it essentially comes from taking the Taylor series expansion for um, two dig for uh, two independent variables. So instead of f of x, it's f of x comma y. You can do the Taylor series expansion and then show it. You could also think of it. This comes basically if you do Taylor series expansion for x separately from t. Uh, it's basically the sum of the two. Now there's one caveat though. Uh, this method, by the way, is also known as an explicit method. It's explicit because everything on the right-hand side is known and you can compute the left-hand side. And it, this happens for every single point. And in, uh, as opposed to an explicit method, an implicit method where on the left-hand side, you cannot solve for ti plus one j. You might have ti plus one uh, comma j, ti plus one comma j minus one. So you'll have time ti plus one appearing on multiple time indices on the left side, which means you cannot use one equation to solve it. You'd have to set up the whole system of equations and then solve it. So we'll get to an implicit method in a bit. Uh, one of the good things about this method is that it directly gives you the solution for ti plus one comma j. Um, the problem with the method, however, is that uh, it is stable. This is a condition in which it ensures stability. So this method is stable only if as long as f, which is that expression alpha delta t delta x square is less than half. Okay, that again should come from the Taylor series expansion. I think what happens is uh, the solution will just grow. If you don't, if you don't have that, it will not uh, uh, decay as it's expected from the heat conduction equation. And that's why uh, that condition should be true. Okay, so we'll see how to fix this a bit later. There's an implicit method, which is actually unconditionally stable. You don't have to have to worry about this. We'll talk about that later. 
Uh, let's just try to, now that's a new concept, let's try to apply this, solve a problem, uh, something we can do by hand. Uh, yeah, I should also give you the name for this. this. The name for this method is called forward time central space method. Forward, forward time, central space method, FTCS. And it's not very hard to guess why this is the name. Uh, it's forward time because what we used here, uh, rather in this formula, is the forward for the time expansion, that's forward difference, right? So we have forward time. And then for the spatial one, we use central difference. That's why it's for spatial central space. I think that's the origin. I did not check this myself, but I think that would be the, that should explain why it is called, what it is called. Okay, let's let's try to solve a problem, um, and then I think that'll illustrate how this works. So here's the problem. example. So we're given the equation. Okay. We're given alpha is 0 0.2. Given the initial condition at time t, x comma 0, uh, it's 100 x times 1 minus x. And we're given the boundary condition, t 0 comma t equals t 1 comma t equals 0. That is, the boundaries are held at a temperature of 0. Okay, and so the question is, assuming delta x is 0 0.25, delta is 0 0.1, compute the temperature profile for time from 0 to 0.5 and space from 0 to 1 use forward time central space Now, we know that there's a stability condition for this, so we might want to check that first. So we know that this method works as long as f, which is alpha delta t divided by delta x square, which is 0 0.2, delta is 0 0.1, delta x is 0.25, is equal to, comes out to be 0.32. So this is clearly less than half, which is, by the way, 0.5. Okay, so we are good. We can, uh, uh, so stability condition is satisfied. Which means that we can proceed with uh, this particular. So F is 0 0.32. 0 
less than 0.5. Yeah, let's do some uh, <clears throat> some work to see how many grid points we would need. Uh, we are told that Ti is T0 plus I times delta T, but here T0 is 0. So 0, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 3, 0 0.4. So we need to find T at all those points. So we put I equals let me just explain this, T0 is zero, and then I was um, zero, one, two, three, four, five, and delta T is given to us 0 0.1. Okay, let's do some work to figure out how many grid points we have on X. Let's call that XJ. So it'll be X zero plus delta XJ. So that would actually come out to be 0 0.25.5.75 and 1. And that's because x0 is 0. It's basically uh, this one. And then j would be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And delta x would be 0 0.25. It's actually given here. So this is the key thing. This is what we seek. And then for time, it's this. Okay, so if you want to visualize this graph in a, in a plot, it would be, so there are, one, two, three, four, five points. And for time, there's one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. It's missing one, two. Zero. Okay. So this is what we're trying to do here is figure out what is the value for time or temperature at all these points. So it's one, two, three, four, five times six. There are 30 grid points and we need to evaluate the time at each of those grid points. So T I I get the index correct. Yeah, X is, uh, first one is time. Now, there's some good news. Uh, we don't have to do 30 points. We're given values of some points. If you go back, and if you see this, uh, you're told that, let's look at this. You're told what happens at time t equals zero. You know the value. It is 100x uh, times one minus x. So if you use that, let's go back. Zero. x comma zero is x times 100 minus x. So if you compute the value at 
uh, these grid points is zero. Point twenty five zero is sorry, it's hundred x one minus x. This comes out to be 18.75. Okay. And we have T.50. Uh, this is going to be symmetric with 0.25, so it should be 18.75. And then T10 should be zero. Okay, so we know the values at, so this is all that time t equals zero. So we know the values here. These are all known. I'm going to write them here. So it's zero, zero, 25. Okay, so that's the initial condition. We actually know something more than that. If you look at the second condition, that's the boundary condition. We're told that at the boundary at x equals zero and x equals one, the temperature is zero. So that actually makes our life easy. So. This point, this point, it's all zero. Okay, so from 30 points, we have computed the value at let's see, six, six. 12, 13, 15, 15 points. So you only left with 15 points. So you have to use that formula only for those 15 points. Suddenly uh, life is much easier, at least for the exam, if you think of it this way, you got this, pretty much got half the points. Half of it is solved. Okay, now let's get the 15 points. For that, you need to use the formula. Okay, so here's the formula. I'll call that FTCS. The formula we wrote down was uh, right here. So I'm just going to copy this formula down. This one. Okay. So note that the first index is time, the second index is space. <clears throat> and then if you put i equals zero, that is time equals zero, we know the solution at time t equals zero completely. Like this is the solution for time t equals zero. So we'll Put i equals zero there. So let's start with i equals zero. And then our formula is one j equals f t zero j plus one. Okay, 
now that we have this formula, we have to do it for j equals 0, j equals 1, j equals 2, and so on. So once we have this, now let's put j equals 0. Uh, we have a problem here. You can't, you can't write the formula like this. You're going to write 0, comma minus 1. There's nothing. There's no x at minus 1. So uh, this thing is, you shouldn't write this blindly. What is t1, comma 0? If you go back here, um, just to help you further, let's give this i, index i. This is i equals 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then this one would be j equals 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, so uh, this one index would be t. You look at the first column i, it's 5. And the second index is j1. So that's t5, comma 1. So what we're interested in here is what is t1, comma 0? So t1, uh, i equals 1, and j equals 0. It's this point. We know the value at that point. It's just 0. So we don't really have to write the formula. It's a boundary condition. In fact, that also be true for this point. Oh, by the way, I should make this clear. We, we already know the solution here when we say um, i equals 0. And we are trying to solve for uh, so when i equals 0, we are solving for all, all j's when i equals 0. So if you look at i equals 0, sorry, my bad. i equals 0 is here. And so we know the solution here, so we don't care about it. Next, we go for i equals, uh, for i equals z. Go back, OK. So when you put i equals 0, we get ti, comma j, 1, comma j. So here we are interested in all things happening over here. So this is what we're solving. We already know the value at level i equals 0, we need to solve for level i equals 1. And that is what uh, this formula is all about. It's just for i equals 1. OK, now what we can do is go back and see what it looks like. We actually know the value here. We also know the value here. This is the index uh, i equals 0, j equals 4. So i equals 0, 4. So 0, comma 4 is known. So we don't have to do that. So j equals 4 is 0. It's a boundary condition. But everything else has to be computed. So we need to compute. Um, this is my bad. It's 1, comma 4, not 0, comma 4. So we need to find compute the value at 1, comma 1, 1, comma 2, 1, comma 3. That's it. So let's put j equals 1. So now using the formula, 1, comma 1 equals f 0, comma 2 minus 0, comma 0 plus 0, comma 1. Okay, 0, comma 2. That's 0, comma 2 is this 25. Uh, this should be positive, not negative. My bad. It should be positive. Uh, 0, comma 0, which is this point, it's 0. Uh, F is 32, point 32. 0, comma 1, x is 0, y is 1, so it's 18.75. Okay, so this comes out to be 14.75. Next, we put j equals 2. So that'll be i comma, so j equals 2. f t 0 comma 3 plus t 0 comma 1 plus 
1 minus 2 f t 0 comma j is 2. Point 32, 0 comma 3, x is 0, y is 3, so it's this index 18.75. 0 comma 1, 0, 1 is here 18.75 again. Plus 1 minus 2 times 0 0.32, 0 comma 2, x is 0, y is 2, it's 25. So I get 21. If you j equals 3, f plus okay, so this actually uh, will be uh, it's actually symmetric. So what happens is whatever you see at j equals one, the same will appear at j equals three. It just happens to be symmetric. Um, so it's zero plus point twenty five. Okay, so that's just, so what we've achieved here is essentially for index one, okay? So we've obtained a solution everywhere here, done. Now you need to repeat that same thing with this part. For that, you'll have to put um, I equals two, so Next, we'll do it is for i equals one, which will give us in this formula, when you put i equals i equals one, you get t two comma j equals f i equals one. So i comma j plus one plus t one, I think it's j minus one, j, j minus one plus one minus two F T one J. Okay, so once you get this formula, now we need to go for J equals zero. Now the good thing is two comma zero is known. If you look at this, uh, this is two, this is zero. So it's a value here, and we know the value is zero. So that is zero. In fact, we also know the value at J equals uh, four. It's going to be this value, it is zero. We only need to solve for J equals one and J equals two and three. I put j equals one in this formula. T one zero. Okay, point thirty two. I'll give this one to you. Okay, so what is t one two? This is the value we computed some time back. If you go here, t one two. T one two is here. That's twenty one, and that's why it's just twenty one. T10 is something we get from here. 1, uh, comma 0, 1, comma 0, it's 0. Plus 1 minus 2 times 0.32. 1, comma 1 is something we would have computed here. So 1, comma 1 is 14.75. So it comes out to be 12.03. Then j equals two. J 
Yeah, I'm running short of time, so I'll just give you the value. Then you can check my calculation. Uh, this is 0 0.32, 14.75. Seventeen. Uh, it turns out for j equals three, the same as uh, j equals one, it should come out to be the same. Okay. So what happens is essentially this whole process gives me the solution for uh, two comma j. So I'll basically get everything over here. And then I have to do it for three and four and so on. So end result, once you do this calculation, obviously I'm not going to give you such a big problem for the exam, but for the homework, yes. Uh, once you do this whole thing, you want to uh, catalog, you need to summarize your results. So this is what you want to do in the end. Temperature profile, uh, T and X, zero, 0.25, 0.5, Time is 0, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0.5. Okay, so now you need to fill this table. Uh, so you know all these are zero. Super easy. And all these are zero. And then we know the values initial time. These are the 15 values we knew. Now you could actually do this. Instead of drawing it this way, this way, you could directly start off with this, make a table like this first, and then just as you calculate, just put in values, which actually makes it easy to do this calculation. Then we have 14.75. This will be the same. It's a symmetric profile, 21. Then we have 12.03. This will also be 12.03. And then middle one will be 17. And 9.7708. This will also be 9.7708, Then finally, 6.4513. So this is your final solution. You need to present your results like this.